Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm sick, and I'm also Scott Ramph, but let's get into it. Um, I got a fairly short show for you guys. There's no city council on Monday because it was a holiday. What holiday? I totally forgot. Um, anyways, let's move on. <laughs> the weather's been cold. It's especially cold when you uh, are suffering from a cold on the same day that the weather was down to single digits. And you can expect some of those single digits to happen for your Thursday night. Let's take a look at our weather. Uh, it's currently 12 degrees outside. It wasn't that bad when I walked out to my car, but then again, the high is going to be uh, 27. Winter advisory warning is into effect today until about now. Um, your low is going to be 10 degrees. Your high is going to be 23 on Thursday with a low of 4 degrees. Friday, you can expect uh, your low temperatures to start rising up, but then your highs are going to low down too and start averaging out in the 20s by the weekend. But I'll get more into the weekend programming a little bit later. Let's talk about some uh, news that are happening. A man was hit by a train when attempting to cross a railroad crossing. Uh, some places in the state of Montana don't have uh, those bars that close down to allow uh, people to know when a train is coming. So the, the man drove his truck right in front of a train, and the train basically pushed him for half a mile. The man, Roy Shutter, a Navy veteran and wildlife firefighter, was pushed half a mile and sustained sev uh, severe injuries, but he is in the hospital under stable conditions. Um, it, the tax season is upon us, and yet a certain company out of Smurfit Stone has yet to pay any taxes on their property, which is now a Superfund site. Missoula County delinquent tax record shows M2 Green, which bought the former mill site back in 2010, uh, $382,713 in errors on seven of its 15 parcels. Um, M2 Green is an Illinois-based company that specializes in redeveloping contaminated brownfield sites. Uh, Due to the previous activities on the Smurfit Stone industrial site, a variety of hazardous chemicals were left unlined ponds along the Clark Fork River when the former 3,200-acre pulp plant closed in 2010. Yet taxes are the least of their worries. They took a loan of $29 million from a uh, Washington-based company and bought the site and were unable to do what they said they were going to do, clean up and sell the scrap metal. In November of 2017, they uh, met an understanding that they would pay $1.2 million in back taxes with the company agreeing to pay um, about a million dollars and foreclose on 14 to 15 parcels by May 1st. And so far, um, they've been kind of in the wind. All this never really happened so far. Um, M2 Green has accumulated a quarter million in delinquencies and not paying their taxes. And many speculate that March 1st deadline will not be met. In state news, one of the few hunting bills that are uh, that have many people agreeing on in the legislature is to end pre uh, predator derbies. Uh, bills SB 186 and 187 would see the end of using vehicles to hunt down and kill predatory species that are considered in the coyote umbrella of game hunting. So like invasive predatory species that um, have a certain amount of population that are not endangered. Um, of course, the so far, it's a, it's a year-round deal. You can basically go on an ATV and run over a coyote, fox, or whatever, and kind of shoot them as you're rolling down an ATV. Uh, but of course, you know, Senator Mike Phillips, a Democrat, was behind putting this forward uh, the other day. And as much of some people opposition, um, they want to, I mean, they're saying that um, they made it clear that driving um, these vehicles while hunting uh, um, over an animal doesn't justify best practices when hunting. Uh, Philip argues that the derbies both encourage needless violence, but also do not follow known wildlife manage pr management practices, which are which call for tar um, targeting specific animals that may be uh, predated. Um, predators to livestock. So far, no one has voted on either bill. Many support the SB 187, which is you can't run over uh, an animal. And of course, 186 saw a little bit of backlash um, over hunting parties that could get rid of invasive predatory animals near livestock. There's a lot of news going on here. I'm just going to try to go through it. But the Trump administration say it intends to cancel a $929 million federal grant for California's high-speed rail project. Um, so far, uh, the administration also wants to uh, reclaim another $2.5 billion in federal funds already spent by California on the project. Um, last week, Donald Trump declared a state of emergency for border wall security, with that looking to gather funds from pretty much anywhere he can. Last week, Governor uh, of California, Gavin Newsom, a Democrat, uh, proposed 
to scale back the project and focus on completing a link in the Central Valley between Bakersfield and Merced. Um, California is in the process of a lawsuit against the current administration since Trump declared the state of emergency last week. And as the Associated Press reports, $929 million that Trump is threatening to cancel was approved by Congress nearly a decade ago. It is not clear how the administration can force California to return to return the two hundred. $2.5 billion that has already been spent on the light rail. The light rail is supposed to be an electronic bullet train in California, and um, so far the, the, the price for this rail that is going to basically go across the state of California is upwards in the ticket of $77 billion. Okay. So here's a big thing that's happened internationally to help combat um, malaria is that scientists in Italy um, are looking for uh, basically to turn coat uh, mosquitoes. Uh, for the first time, researchers have begun a large scale releases of engineered insects into a high security laboratory in Italy, uh, Turney, Italy to be more specific. Basically, this seems like they're uh, what they did with um, they not them particularly, but other scientists have uh, introduced Africanized killer bees with North American bumblebees, so they would be tougher um, um, in certain areas and help uh, um, e ease up on some of the killer bees as well. And that was one of the things that scientists have done. Of course, let's go back to the mosquitoes. So the whole idea with the mosquitoes is that they, wanna, uh, they wanted to breed a mosquito that was basically barren. Um, so by doing this, they would release these um, mutated insects into um, high air density areas of where malaria is spread, which malaria is spread through uh, mosquitoes. Um, and anyways, what they want to do is that uh, they basically altered their genes to a certain point where um, most of the mosquitoes are able to breed with other mosquitoes, uh, but their next generation will not be able to breed. So it's basically all the females would uh, be barren. And that's kind of what they're trying to do. Good, bad, and um, something can come from this. But so far, two-thirds of the world are affected by malaria annually. Um, 200 million people each year and uh, are affected by malaria, and it kills 400,000 people, mostly young children. And so those are some of the thick news items that are happening in the world and in the local area today. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's throw it over to uh, some new programs. They're going to be airing on MCAT. Uh, Dude, I just drew episode three will be airing this week as well. There's not too many new programs airing this week. Uh, uh, usually that happens because January, December are usually the, like, uh, usually the lighter months going into it. We and all the holiday concerts that we're playing, but by March, will be uh, seeing a, a very large resurgence of a lot of uh, uh, programs that will be airing on MCAT. So without further ado, here is a highlight episode from our Saturday episode. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it a lot. You can watch uh, the episode uh, by looking up, Dude, I Just Drew, episode six. But here is a highlight reel uh, made by uh, our very own Graham Martin. It's me, Rowan, and welcome to Dude I Just Drew with our very special guest, Steve Glukert. Um, thanks for having me, Rowan. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> thanks for coming on. So uh, I guess we'll talk about the rules. Uh, first, we pick a hat, uh, tile, what, whatever it's called, no, <laughs> from the hat, and we draw it for about five minutes. You see the Bitcoins stacked yeah, there, the Bitcoin huh? Stack. How about that? Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I thought you were going to make a triangle and make it like a pyramid The Illuminati, the oh, Illuminati no. pyramid scheme. <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, <laughs> Can't make it too on the nose or else they'll come after you. Is the dog, uh, oh, the wolf shooting the moon? It's a, that's a target. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dang, oh, Scott, man. you're just like. I'm trying to be metaphorical. <laughs> you're yeah. just like, is that the moon? So that's the Big Dipper, that's the North Star, and that's the moon. Nice. Okay. And just, just about in, five minutes. Okay. Just in time. And arms going back up to here. And it's going. It's going pew. <laughs> it's going. It's going pew. 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 And this is. And this was by anonymous. Or by by you, right? <laughs> by you, right? By Scott. Our our. Are in person. <laughs> there we go. Actually, I was already done. Awesome. <laughs> 
own magical combo slash powers? Mackenzie Eckstein! <gasps> um, yeah, magical powers. I've always found magical powers more interesting than actual superpowers. But magic is less limited than superpowers. Although, with limited, you can write better stories with limited stuff. So, boom, take that, Mackenzie. Don't at me. <laughs> he is totally magic. He's using it's like his... It's not even fantasy. It's just actual magic. <laughs> it's like, it's not even... So, is this the, uh, is this the sixth beetle? You're kind of you're just looking at his face. It's the like... sixth beetle? <laughs> That's what makes him so magic. Oh, I sold myself in half Ringo. Ringo! <laughs> Ringo! <laughs> Confirmed he's magic. <laughs> Whoa, and his arm's off. Uh, he, did, he did. He was really trying to prove his point. Oh, how magic! <laughs> how magic he is! Yeah, yeah. yeah he's is, he, is, he, is he scared? Did he? He's did totally. He he's going, boy. Look at how magic I am. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen many images of Alcatraz, but I think uh, I the know. island's kind of like that. It's out in San Francisco Bay. I'm just going to use your drawing as reference. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> The Alcatraz. Who? What? Who is the Alcatraz? I'm. I'm getting to that. Part. <laughs> Alcatraz is some guy who owes me five bucks. <laughs> Not Alcatraz, but the Alcatraz. I just love this challenge a lot. I think this one is. It's a good suggestion. Wish I had about twenty minutes on it. Do you see how what I'm doing here? Realistic, I see what you did there. So, yeah, yeah. When you run out of time, <laughs> yeah, when you, you run just out label of time, it. You label it. No, hold it. There's one other thing. What? Uh, the moon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like the little, that little response is just like, it's the, um, you know, the so moon. In this episode, the moon is the Costanza. The moon. We'll send them to the moon. Jerry, <laughs> I don't want to go to the moon. I don't want to go to the moon, Jerry. <laughs> you gotta go to the moon. I don't want to. <laughs> don't, don't, don't test me, Jerry. Don't test me. I destroy the world if I want to. I, I am that guy. Sean from Jimmy Neutron, but he's very tall. Fine. Neil, come up with better ideas. Jeez. <laughs> so, how do you make Sheen tall? Well, obviously, just extend his torso. <laughs> obviously, just extend his torso, like so, and then just keep his legs the same length. And he's like, hey, hey, I'm Sheen. There you go, Neil. All right. Close come up happy. with be Come up with better ideas. <laughs> <laughs> If I didn't have the knowledge, I bet you would have gotten me. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have the knowledge that Neil had. Thank like, you so much for having me. Yeah, it was good to have you. Very on. great. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to still draw. Yeah. I'm going to keep drawing. That's what, that's, okay. what I really want. that's what I want from everybody. <laughs> Whoever comes on the show, just keep drawing if, okay. you, if you get a good interest in it. Um, I will see you guys next episode. Don't forget to... Um, Follow the Facebook. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. Um, it's good having Steve on. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> and Steve's art also. Yeah, check out Steve's art as well. He's a really good artist, <laughs> as you guys can see. And um, I hope I can see you all on the next episode. Uh, see you later. Welcome back, guys. And so, you know, you can look up all these episodes and more. All you got to look up is Dude, I Just Drew. And you can find all these episodes and more. So six episodes in. Uh, competition, Rowan uh, hosts the show. He takes on artists. Uh, we were very fortunate to, to get uh, former cur uh, retired curator at the Missoula Art Museum, Steve Gukert, on the show to uh, be part of the experience. And so the rules are five rounds of drawing. You get five minutes each. And... Two artists go head to head. If you're interested in being a part of Dude I Just Drew, you can contact Graham uh, or any of us at our Facebook page, Dude I Just Drew. All right, did you see my little cameo in there as well? I had, I mean, of course, you, you, you know, if you were if you were listening, you could also hear my voice. But I also wanted to show you guys my hand. So if you guys take a look over here, 
there's my hands. So we had a couple technical problems here and there. And um, most of the time, uh, we were using a DSLR camera right there. And the thing about DSLR cameras is that um, if you're using them as like a broadcast camera, you might have to turn them off and turn them on every 20 minutes because a lot of times they just kind of stop working if you don't use them. All right, anyways, um, but far be it from me to get too technical. Let's talk about something everybody wants to hear about, and that's uh, city government. We're diving right into your city government meeting. Kicking things off is your Committee of the Whole this morning, which already happened, but you guys... Um, there was no city council meeting on Monday. It was a holiday. I don't know which holiday it was. I'm not going to, don't at me. Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look it up later. Uh, I just off the top of my head, it's like, uh, someday something happened. All right, anyways, Committee of the Whole happened. It's a continued topic. They're talking about the ward boundaries. So Ward 2 is getting a little big for the bridges. And so the city ward plan and the map is trying to reallocate, readjust all the places. So each ward is has an equal amount of people, which averages about 12,300. There's six wards. 76,000 people uh, currently are reside in the city of Missoula, not counting people who are kind of like in and out. You know, like not the dorms, that kind of deal, but like residents of the city of Missoula. So anyways, they're talking about this and the public hearing is needed to consider an ordinance to realign them. And the ordinance, I mean, they're, um, <clears throat> so the whole deal is, I think they're doing it on March 11th. Don't quote me on this, but it's, I believe it's going to be the second Monday in March is when they're going to really discuss the ward boundaries. And a lot of the, uh, and one of the things they were really talking about is the city council uh, during the meeting. Jordan Hess was using an example being uh, a resident of a certain ward it is the requirement for being in the city council of, of that particular ward. So if they adjust the ward map, they have to make sure that the count city council representatives are within that ward. But then again, like if the ward map changes, I don't see why they can't just grandfather a person in and just uh, not, not have to use that as an example. I think I, I should actually make a comment. I'm going to make a, I'm going to go to city council meeting and I'm going to make a comment. I'm going to totally do that during the public hearing. It's going to be delicious. All right, anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, they're also going to adopt a resolution of the city council of the city of Missoula providing the sale insurance and delivery of the city's water system. The principal amount is not to exceed $5 million to pay a portion of the city's outstanding water system revenue bonds. So the city bought their water company. It wasn't cheap. And so far, they're going to be paying $5 million. Many of the monies that are being acquired are through the, the fees, the water fees. Um, a lot of times the PSC, the Public Commissions Association, I'm not sure, don't, don't. So the Public Service Commission, I believe, or PSC, um, they're the ones that regulate um, how much um, the rate of water is versus like, so, you know, water companies can't make a profit. A lot of times they have to break even and they have to be able to pay their uh, services. So you, you can't get rich owning a water company. Um, and that's one of the things that the PSC and you know, the Montana um, regulators uh, help prevent um, water companies and water systems from doing from, um, oh, I mean, raiding people out of their water. So that's kind of what they're going to be talking about, uh, about the payments for the water company. I don't know why I had to over explain this, but that's kind of what's happening in your community of the whole meeting. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Friday's um, show with um, quotes and more. Uh, land use and planning, not much happening there. It's a pretty short thing since they don't have a meeting on, um, on Monday. They don't seem to have too much going on on Wednesday. So they're appointing some people and they're doing a family transfer of property. So if you want to learn more about how a uh, city is involved with a, a transfer of property from uh, a family to their children, that kind of deal. But other than that, um, those are uh, the meetings that are on the docket uh, for land use and planning and community of the whole. And you can look all that up by going on to the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, guys. It's time for dubbing stuff. I promised I'd do a dubbing stuff, and today we have a dubbing stuff um, featuring five minutes to live. And what would you do when you ha if you had five minutes to live? Apparently, uh, I did this. So, without further ado, here is dubbing stuff. And when I come back, I'll talk about events in the city of Missoula. Hey, Fifo, make sure you eat all your gruel, okay? It'll make you big and strong. Ugh. Ugh. Did you know that gruel and oatmeal are one and the same? <laughs> I told your dad, but your dad told me that, um... Uh, I'm tired of oatmeal. <laughs> uh, work, work, work. Always gotta work. Uh, we got grueled again today. Ugh. Nonsense. Ugh, that's enough gruel, I think. 
Uh, ugh. Oh, oh, wait, what are, you, what are you doing? Whatever, I guess. Listen, honey, if it was any other time, I would be downing that gruel. Well, that's nice to hear and all, but, you know, sometimes you can't live off of coffee alone. Trust me, I've tried. Yeah, you were like 30 pounds lighter and had no shape. Hey, Daddy, you gonna come to my baseball game? Well, maybe. Would it bother you if I brought my secretary to your game? Ooh, uh, oh, what's wrong, sports. Daddy? Oh. Are you okay? Are you gonna well, be fine? sometimes coffee for breakfast isn't enough. What'd you just say to me? Uh, oh, you listen here. <laughs> well, aren't you gonna say anything? Well, you see, a woman's is like a roller coaster. There's ups and I'm downs. I'm too short to ride the roller coaster. Maybe we should save the birds and the bees talk for later? Here, have some delicious gruel. Mer. Well, this'll make your oatmeal taste better. A little bit of sugar. Oh, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm gonna add some more cream. Lots and lots well, of cream. Well, son, you better watch that cream. You don't want to turn into cream. <laughs> don't I look like I know what I'm doing? How about you just back off, Daddy? And besides, two out of three of us are actually having a complete breakfast. Just finish your breakfast, dear, okay? Well, nothing like liquid cement to fill your morning. I've probably eaten 20 pounds of oatmeal in the last week. Well, excuse me for giving you protein and fiber for your balanced diet. It'll help you grow big and strong. But, Mom! Listen, you're growing, and I'm not. You have growth to grow, so you need the protein to grow. Oh, uh, wow. That's like the first time you've ever had my back on this. Is it that surprising? Well, yeah, you're usually closed off and you don't really say anything. Are we really going to do this here? Do you honestly think that I'm just as closed-minded as my son over there? You know, he's just a kid. He doesn't know any better. You should know better. You have to know better because, hey, listen, it's breakfast time. We should just be that family. The O'Connors next door are well, like, Well, maybe you oh. should have breakfast for the O'Connors. Well, at least there I can have some decent bacon instead of these damn oats. But you know how to brew coffee. Oh yeah, chasing that little monster around the house. I need every advantage I can get. This is your second breakfast you've gone without eating. Jesus, Helen, would a little I'm bacon in the morning is be that difficult to make? See, I'm not looking for oatmeal bacon. I'm just looking for straight up bacon. Listen, I'll go to the store and I'll get that bacon for you. No problem. Don't worry about it. Um, what's the number for pizza? Sometimes the funniest thing is starting off as trying to be funny and then getting a little too real for its own good. All right, so let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for Missoula events. I get this from MissoulaEvents.net. I just do a nice little copy and paste, and I get a nice flyover of what's happening with the city of Missoula. There, you know my technique. More WordPress. WordPress. WordPress is a great kind of like a blogging website to promote anything, and they're going to teach it at the Life Learning Center. They do it a whole bunch of classes and stuff like that. So they teach you how to uh, social networking tools like YouTube, Flickr, Twitter, and Facebook. I don't know if anybody even uses Flickr. I think it's just like a, a poor man's uh, Tumblr. But then again, Tumblr uh, changed. Um, Indoor sports, um, all your indoor sports activities and stuff are kicking off in your Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. You got uh, your Mismo Gymnastics and you got Ruth Zachary Sports Center. A bunch of things happening from a 9, 9.30 until about like 12, and then they have a couple afternoon deals. Uh, they're pretty much open for a good chunk of time for anybody who just wants to stop and do some uh, gymnastics in a pa padded um, indoor recreation facility. Art Associates, Art, sorry, Art Associates of Missoula Monthly Meeting. So Radius Gallery, the Art Associates of Missoula Art is having an artist come down at the Radius Gallery, which is on 114 East Main, and they're going to have clas classical figure painter Linda Leslie will discuss her recent works. And you can find out more information by calling Susie Riso um, at 549-0752. Again, that number is 549-0752, and you can ask about the Radius Gallery, about this that's happening at 10 a.m. Um, Big Side Documentary Film Festival, uh, challenging uh, dominant views. So it, um, Big Side Documentary Film Festival it brings a bunch of documentary filmmakers together, and it's uh, it's a good way to exchange ideas. Documentaries, nonfiction, movies have been playing pretty much all week long. You can go to BigSkyFilmFest.org for more information about all these things. But um, Al, Jazeera, Al, Jazeera, Al Jazeera, sorry about that. I, 
Reading it and saying it are two different things, but is uh, uh, Al Jazeera is an English award-winning flagship observation documentary strand. Um, they, uh, you get to hear how independent filmmakers craft character-driven films with strong unfolding, uh, actually for a diverse global audience, reflecting human experiences beyond the headline. So this is at MCT Center for Performing Arts. They're gonna be, uh, it's going to be a di discussion. It's a doc shop. It starts at 10.30 a.m. Uh, this morning. It's going to be great. It's usually open for the public. Um, they all donate for the Big Side documentary go to the Documentary Film Festival so they can keep this going on for many years to come. I believe they are celebrating their 19th, or is it 16th? I believe it's the 16th year with the Big Side Documentary F Festival. I don't know. I'm trying to pull things out of my head, which I probably shouldn't be doing, but let's talk about the University Center. This one is for sure because they're going to be celebrating 50 years of of being called the UC Center at the University of Montana, the University Center Center is turning 50, and they want to celebrate their students and in the facility, basically free gaming in the game room. You see from 11 to 2, they're going to have some food, um, some drinks and all that stuff, free games in the game room. UC Theater will host a free screening of Wonder Woman with complimentary popcorn and soda from 7 to 9 p.m., tonight at the UC Center. Um, Hands-on Science, the Science of Sound, uh, kicking off uh, your Science Learning Wednesday. Um, Spectrum Discovery Center is open Wednesdays through Sunday, starting at 11. They're going to be learning about sound, the science of sound. Learn about how to hear sound waves and make your, them yourselves with the instruments at the Discovery Bench today. So it's going to get noisy. Uh, congregate lunches in Bonner, our, our Savior Lutheran Church, from 12.30 to 2 p.m. They hold a congregate lunch each month for the third Wednesday at the Savior's Lutheran Church in Bonner. Lunch starts at 12.30. Individuals in, interested in attending can call them at 258-6245 at the church or to reserve a spot. Again, that number is 258-6245. Bonner, our Savior's Lutheran Church is hosting a lunch today. Big Star Documentary Film Festival once again. All sorts of documentaries are happening this week. Short docs, long docs, um, even docs that climb on rocks. All sorts of things happening this week as well. Missoula uh, Middle School Writers at Missoula Public Library and Preview Writing Schools get a little chocolate. Um, it happens in the boardroom every Wednesday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Improve your uh, child's 6th through ninth grade's writing skills. Predator feeding. Munzilla and Sextarium will be uh, feeding a cricket to one of the hug hungry predators around 4 p.m. At the Missoula and Sectarium, you can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. Come see you as hungry today. Girls Rock Camp, Zootown Arts Community Center. They form a band, write an original song, and perform it at Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat Lounge. And this is uh, going to be performing it on March 15th, which is a Friday. And it's $235 or $225, $10 off for if you're a member of Zach. 3D printing workshop, um, 6.30. Missoula Public Library hosts a 3D printing workshop. Yes, they have a 3D printer there, and you can basically make 3D models of yourself and make yourself an action figure. And you can learn more about this tonight at 6.30 p.m. at Missoula Public Library. But if you're interested in learning about MCAT and learning to broadcast your own show and even be on YouTube and all those social media websites to help promote yourself and have people at you um, for good reasons, um, you, can, <laughs> you can come to MCAT's orientation every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. It's open to anybody interested in learning about broadcasting. Montanans in Mongolia, Opportunity Resources hosting a kind of a meet and greet with people who went to, um, in June of 2006, Deborah and Greg left on their grand volunteer adventure to Mongolia. They come, they came back, and tonight at Opportunity Resources, they're going to talk about uh, their Bioregions International Project in the Darhart Valley of Mongolia and felt that their horse skills may be used to local uh, um, herders in the Mongolian Valley. So... Learn about that. Learn a little bit about other cultures, especially of Mongolia. I learned about Mongolia when I was in ninth grade because I went to school with two Mongolian girls. Um, I thought it was very interesting. They have some beautifully tapestry that they brought in to that. I remember that very vividly, even though I was nine years old about 21 years ago. So that's pretty much it for your Wednesday. Um, if you're interested in going out and about, they have a bunch of trivia nights happening. Um, you got Trivia Beer Suit at the Press Box. You got Brains on Trivia at Broadway Bar and Grill. You got Trivia at the Silver Slipper. Um, you got Karaoke, Dark Horse. You got Karaoke at uh, the Badlander, all that and more. But of course, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net for more information. I have um, a Clay Studio art clip for you guys, and this is gonna end on the 22nd. I'll play it once more on Friday, but usually on Friday, on the last day, they start cleaning up their um, their selection that's on display. So this might be your last chance to check it out. And here's just a preview, a taste of the Clay Studio. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks to our very own Rick Phillips for producing those. Rick Phillips is the, the big guy who does all the your uh, city council meetings from behind the scenes. But he goes out to the art museums and takes some images and pictures of a, of all the installations. A lot of times people are just like, oh, you're just taking pictures of the art. Why don't you go out and see the art? And I think this is a good representation of the art, which you guys can experience on your own as well. Let's talk about some things that are happening for your Thursday. YMCA hosts a family uh, fun time at the YMCA, Tuesdays, Thursdays, um, and I think Saturdays from 9 to about 11.30. And then, of course, Fridays, they do it from 3.30 to 5. It's a fun time for families, and they get to use the facilities at YMCA. Open hours at Makerspace at Music Public Library. Hey, last... Uh, Tonight is the workshop through for 3D printing. Makerspace, uh, 10 a.m. to about 1 p.m., 2 to 6 p.m. All those free time to basically print out and um, model your items for printing. And I think that would be really cool if you wanted to learn about 3D printing and then actually do it the next day would be the perfect timing to do so as well. Lunch Club Art Meetup, Mizzou Art Museum. They do this monthly meeting um, January 9th, February 21st, March 21st, April 12th, and then that's it. So we're pretty much halfway through it from 12 to 1 p.m. It's a free ma'am invites you to your business to sign up lunch clubs, 30 minute mini tours, and 30 minute lunch conversations. And this is at the ma'am, it starts at 12. You get to stay for lunch, but you get to go on an art tour as well. So get a little art and culture inside of you tomorrow starting at 12 at Mizzou Art Museum. Animal Mimics, who's who? Mizzou Insectarium looks at animals that mimic other animals, especially in the insect world, um, and they will planning a fun games to guess what might be dangerous and who's not. It's a, uh, is it a stinging wasp or harmless fly, a venomous snake or a creepy caterpillar, a spider with fangs or an ant? Weird. These are just some of the questions you'll be <laughs> challenged by any time from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Mizzou Insectarium. The Lego Club, 3.30 p.m. at Missoula Public Library. They had to do it every Thursday. Uh, women's Bicycle Maintenance Workshop. Uh, Free Cycles is hosting a monthly workshop to help women become more confident when working on their bicycles. Bring your bike, your questions, food, and or drink to share and enjoy the camaraderie of other women interested in being more independent with their bikes. Feel free to stop by in Trump between 5 and 8 p.m. for the uh, Women's Bicycle Workshop at Free Cycles tomorrow from 5 to 8. Fresh Farm Fresh Pitch Fest, Burn Street Bistro is, is a free event, and they're inviting five Western Montana farms and food businesses will present live pitches for 0% interest loan funds through kiva.org, hosted by Community Food and Agriculture Coalition, CFAC, and it's going to be at Burn Street Bistro tomorrow night at 6 p.m. You get to learn more about farm to table and farm pitches and all sorts of stuff like that. Open kayak at the Kearns Aquatic Center from 8 to 10 p.m. If you're interested in doing some late night kayaking, Thursday night's the place to be, or maybe you just do it uh, to prove game before you go out on the town. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking like that. All right, moving on. Let's talk about some <laughs> some things that are happening for your Thursday night. Party Volcano. Woo woo. If you're interested in going out and just uh, banging your head and just swaying your hips and um, trying to be respectful for everybody's personal boundaries, which usually never happens on a kind of like a um, EDM music DJ blah blah blah. Anyways, um, happening Thursday night is the K- KFGM Artist Residency Series at the Union Hall Ballroom at 7 p.m. You got open mic at the, uh, okay, let's let's kind of skip ahead. Let's go to the late night stuff. They got karaoke at the Dark Horse. They got um, Hellgate Elk Lodge is doing a movie called Lotus and Grit. Um, 
all sorts of big side documentary film festivals are happening that night as well. So pretty much uh, like DJ music and karaoke happening tonight for your downtown needs and more. So that's pretty much it for well, everything that you need to know. If you're interested in finding out more about your uh, Missoula events, you can MissoulaEvents.net. If you're interested in finding out more about um, – MCAT. You can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org. We have six kids thus far signed up for spring flux. And I think we'll probably cap it out at 12. And it's just basically a week-long camp during the spring break season for parents who uh, don't know what to do with their kids during spring break because, hey, they get spring break. Um, <laughs> not the parents. So it's a, uh, it's basically kind of takes the place of school nine to 3 PM. We got some pre-care starting at 8:30 PM. So we'll be available for any early drop-ins as well. And yeah, just request if you want to have any extensions past 3 PM as well, you can, con you can basically click on the link on the webpage and it will bring you to that as well. Um, you go to how do I spring flicks. And also, um, at some point you can also inquire about summer camps. I believe that they will be live pretty soon so you guys can check that out because we're uh we already have the date set um it's pretty much um the last week in june and pretty much all the weeks in july except for the week that involves july 4th so you can look forward to all that and more later on you go to mcat.org for more updates but for spring flicks is a fun thing to do at the end of march all right so let's see if you want to learn more about Wake Up Missoula, you go to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you right out twice. All right, I'm done. That's it. Thank you for joining me. Um, it, I thought the show was going to be a lot shorter, but I guess I just rambled on a little more than I probably should have. So without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. It's hump day, and I hopefully I feel better. Wish me luck. <laughs> I sound a little different for sure, but I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I mean it. All right, bye. Thank <laughs> you.